In previous videos, you learned about discrete random variables, and now we're going to talk about one special type of discrete random variable, which is the uh, binomial. Um, so to understand the binomial distribution, we're going to imagine a series of independent identical trials. And each trial has a binary outcome. So for example, we could think about coin flips. Each coin flip would be one trial, and each trial has two outcomes. You could have a heads or a tails. Or a different example of a binomial would be um, you're drawing cards with replacement. Um, when you draw a card, it could either be a red card or a black card. So it has these two different options. Um, so usually we'll use P, like a small p, to denote the probability of success. Um, so you can define success in a lot of different ways, just like in life, I guess. So success could be the getting a heads. It could be getting a red card. Uh, you can define it however you like. OK, so let's think about a couple of examples. Um, so this first example, we're going to draw three cards with replacement. So that means we'll draw one card, look at it, and put it back in there. Um, so for each card, we're going to record whether we got a face or a number. And we're going to call face a success. OK, so there are 13 different types of cards, twos, threes, blah, blah, blah. Um, and four different faces, jack, queen, king, ace. So the probability of getting a face card is 4 out of 13. OK, so let's define a random variable x. So here's this capital X, and that is going to be the number of faces drawn in those three draws. So we might be wondering, what's the probability that I draw three cards with replacement and get absolutely no faces? Or what's the probability that I get exactly one face card? Or maybe we could ask a question like, what's the probability that I get two or more face cards? So let's figure some of this out. Um, so let's start off by thinking about, well, what are the different options? When I draw my first card, I could get a face or I could get a number. When I draw my second card, I get a, could also get a face or a number and the third face or number. So here I've just made all the different combinations of faces and numbers. Now let's think about, well, what's the probability of getting a face, a face, and a face? Well, the probability of one face is 4 thirteenths. And we know that we just use our multiplication rule here. So 4 thirteenths times 4 thirteenths times 4 thirteenths is a probability of getting face, face, face. So p cubed, where p is 4 thirteenths. And then we could look at a couple more of these, face, face, no face or face, face number. Um, well, two faces, so we have two successes. So we have p squared times the probability of getting a number now, which is 1 minus p. So we can go through, do all of these. Uh, if we want, we could think about this last one together. If we have number, 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 then that means that we have three failures. So we have the probability of failure cubed. OK, so now we have the probabilities. Now let's go through and figure out how many faces we have in each one of these. So if we have this face, 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 we have three faces. Here we have two faces. In the next row we have two faces, one face, two face, blah, blah, blah. And then finally, zero faces. So now we've calculated these probabilities. We've figured out how many faces there are. So we can do things like calculate or write down the probability that we have zero faces. So zero faces. That only happens this one way, and that has probability 1 minus p cubed. Uh, probability that we have exactly one face, well, let's add up all the different ways. So exactly one face, that's this one, and this one, and this one. So add up those three probabilities, and they're all the same probability. So we have 3 times p times 1 minus p squared, which is what we wrote here. Similar thing for x equals 2. Add up this number, this number, and this number to get the probability that x equals 2. And then finally, for the probability x equals 3, we just have p cubed. OK, so if we want to write this more generally and not just think about uh, three cards, if we wanted to think about like 20 cards, um, we could go ahead and do that. So we can just say, let's have n trials. The probability that our random variable x takes on the value k is going to be equal to n choose k 
times p to the k times 1 minus p to the n minus k. So let's break down what this means. So n choose k, this is all the different ways that we could get k successes out of n trials. All right, next piece, k successes out of n trials. That's what this is saying. Um, here we have p, which is the probability of success. So if we have k successes, we figured out that we need to take the probability of success and raise it to the kth power. So then that means if we have k successes, we must have n minus k failures. So we have the probability of failure, 1 minus p, to the number of failures, n minus k. All right, one more note. A couple videos ago, we introduced this, which remember is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. And I called it the binomial coefficient. So now hopefully it makes a little bit of sense why it's called the binomial coefficient and why this is called the binomial distribution.